In simple terms, a chemical reaction is the perfect opportunity for buyers and sellers to buy and sell goods. The buyers and sellers are chemical elements, the goods are electrons, and the currency being exchanged is energy. The purpose of this exchange is to attain stability through an optimal configuration of electrons, which is achieved when an element's outermost shell is either completely filled or completely empty. Basically, an element can buy more electrons to fill its ultimate shell or sell them to empty it. The fewer electrons involved, the less the energy expense. The trades requiring the least amount of energy are the ones most likely to occur. An element would prefer to lose electrons and render itself empty if its outermost shell is less than half filled, or gain some to fill itself if it is already more than half filled. Buying six when you could simply sell two would be energetically inefficient and expensive. Thus, reactivity is a function of how easily an element loses or gains electrons. To determine an element's reactivity, we can learn a lot from the periodic table and its particular trends. The number of electrons in an element's outermost shell increases by one as you move through the elements in a row of the periodic table, although the number of shells remains the same. The number of shells can be deduced from the row number. For instance, every element in the second row will contain only two shells, every element in the third will contain only three, and so on. The increase in electrons is mirrored by an increase in protons. In the tug of war between the pulling protons and the increasingly crowded electrons, the former wins, resulting in strong nuclear attraction pulling all of its shells closer. Due to that strong pull of attraction, an element is more likely to buy or gain electrons as you move along a row. The measure of an element's ability to pull electrons towards it is known as electronegativity. The most electronegative element is the likeliest to steal electrons and react the quickest. Another trend is the larger radius of elements as you move down a column. The number of valence electrons remains the same, even though the atomic number keeps increasing. The measure of an element's ability to lose electrons is known as electropositivity, and it increases as we move down a column. Again, the most electropositive element is the one most likely to give up its electrons and react the quickest. Fluorine is the most reactive non-metal, with an atomic number of 9 and 7 electrons jammed in its valence shell. This means it must gain only a single electron to complete its final shell and achieve stability. Fluorine is identified as the most electronegative element in the periodic table, making it the strongest oxidizing agent. The most reactive metal is cesium, a gold-colored metal that reacts explosively with air and water. Its atomic number is 55. Its large nuclear radius renders its nuclear pole ineffective and makes it awfully clumsy. It is highly acquiescent and readily gives up the single electron in its valence shell to attain stability, making it highly reactive. There is no definitive answer as to which is the most reactive element, because reactions have more than one participant. One could ask which element is the most reactive with sodium. The answer to that is fluorine. Or perhaps you want to know which element is the most reactive with nitrogen. The surprising answer there is lithium. The question of which element reacts the easiest is ambiguous and case dependent, but also quite fascinating.